We're going to continue this series on taking your line of business apps to the next level. And specifically, we're going to talk down and go down the uh, Azure Communication Services road that was started in the previous session. Now, if you're new to these sessions, uh, they're all recorded. I'm going to review really quickly what we've covered up to this point and what's coming. But uh, let's just dive right in here. So first off, in this session, as was mentioned, we're going to focus again on Azure Communication Services. And this is the second kind of major pillar in this demo app that you can do. So the first one is actually AI. And we've already been through uh, around five sessions or so on different Azure OpenAI features that you can add. Now we've moved on to the second pillar of taking your business app to the next level. And that is some business apps, not all, but some, could certainly benefit from adding some communication features. Uh, I gave an example when I first started this session, but I'm gonna review really quickly that story. So I think it was about February of this year, we uh, had an air conditioning unit go out and I live in the desert where it gets really hot in the summer. Luckily it was still you know early kind of spring or early late winter. But uh, we called the air conditioning company. They came and uh, I noticed that as they were up in my attic, looking at the unit up there, they were on their uh, tablet. I don't know what it was, but some type of a tablet. And so the guy's up there in a pretty small space and he has his tablet, he's punching in some things for parts and then he has to call. So he also gets on his phone. And keep in mind, this is not a real safe area to have both hands tied up because there's not a lot of space. So uh, it really emphasized the point of some apps could really benefit from certain communication features. Now, there's going to be a lot of line of business apps you have where you don't need to make like a phone call or send an SMS message or email or something like that. But there's others where this could be super, super valuable. One more story on that, uh, there's a, well, it's the electrical company for where I live. I'm in Arizona in the United States. And uh, they have a lot of remote reps that go out to the different electrical lines. And they also maintain water canals and things like that. And it's kind of the same story there is it's, you could certainly use your phone to just call, but if you're already in the app, why not make it easy? That's what we're gonna talk about today. Now, the uh, after this, the next pillar we're going to talk about is going to get us back to organizational data, and we'll have about four sessions after that, but today is going to be about, about ACS. So if you haven't heard of Azure Communication Services, in our last session, I introduced it, but I'm going to just review really quickly because I know you maybe can't make every single session, but definitely check out the recording if you have some time. Um, you can go to this link here to get more info, but if you just go to learn.microsoft.com, you can learn about what this is. And in a nutshell, what it allows you to do is add things like audio video calling into your apps, phone calling, SMS message sending or receiving even. Uh, you can also send email messages and there's even more. You can do full on telephony and lots of fun stuff there. So to kind of give you an idea of what we're gonna talk about code wise today, Everything that we've been covering, if you're new to this, is in this tutorial, and I'll have a link for you and even a scan code at the end of this session. Uh, but we're now on this one right here, making a phone call. And so I'm gonna walk through the key features that you would find in this tutorial. If you wanna go through it, you don't have to really even listen to me. You could just do this. You know, If you're one of those people in school, you didn't like listening to the lecture, you just wanted the book, here you go. Here's the book. Um, now, let me show you the demo of this really quickly. So the app itself is a real simple line of business app, just has a data grid, and you can do a few different things with AI, organizational data, and then of course, uh, communication features. So if I go into contact customer here, I can call, and I demoed this uh, last week in case those of you who are here saw it, but for those that haven't, what I'm gonna try to do is call my phone here. Now, you may not be able to see me too well on the camera, but we'll uh, we'll give this a shot. Now, this is not my phone number. I hard-coded it somewhere deep in the code just to, for this demo. But this is going to use Azure Communication Services to hopefully call me. And there we go. So I don't know if you can see it, but it is actually calling. Uh, I'm not going to answer because, uh, in fact, let me just hang up. It'll probably go to voicemail. 
And uh, what will happen then – Leave your message. And there we go. Six, zero, two. I'm going to hang up before it gives my whole number out, if you could hear that. But now we're able to make this call directly while the user is working in the app. And again, I know not every line of business app needs this. I've worked on a lot over the years, and there's many that, yeah, you don't need phone calling. But there's others where this might be really valuable again. So that's kind of the feature we're going to talk about here is what would you do to implement this? Well, first off, you would go to the Azure portal, and you would create an Azure Communication Services resource. Now, if I just were to go into the search here and type communication, you'll see communication services right there. It literally takes, I don't know, 30 to 60 seconds to set this up. It's really quick. Now, there's a little more work after that, though, if you want to do like phone calling. So I want to point out a couple things in this little test dewalling service that I have here. You're going to notice right here identities and user access tokens. Now, this is only for development purposes only. But if you wanted to get an access token to try something out for like voice calling, you could go here and generate it and would give you a 24 hour token just for development purposes. And that's actually really cool when you're just starting out with this. But for us, we don't want to do that. We want to do it a little more realistic in this app. So what I'm going to do is if I go to keys, you're going to notice that there's a key and a connection string here. All right. And this is something that when you make the phone call, you're making it from the client side. Well, you don't want to send the connection string down to the client side, right? We want to have that in a backend API that would be ultimately secured. So I'm going to show you that. We're going to have an API that's called. The front end will then get the information it needs for the token. Then it can make the phone call. And so you'll see where that comes into play in just a moment. Now, in order to do this, we need a phone number. Not only a phone number to call, but we need, an, what are we calling from? So you can set up either a local number or a toll-free number. And so if I go to phone numbers here, I'll just walk you through the basics. In this particular resource, I don't have one set up. I'm using a, a different one. Um, but once this loads, there we go. You'll notice I can activate a trial phone number or purchase phone number. So I think local numbers are like a dollar a month and toll free ones are two dollars a month. So if I click on get here, I can select my country or region. Um, so pick what is supported here. And is it an application making the call or sending SMS? In my case, it is. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. But you'll notice you can also use this for a person that might be making the call. Um, and then again, you can do local. I'm going to do the toll-free option. And now you're going to pick what do you want to do? Are you just making outbound calls? Are you receiving calls? You can literally set up call center type of functionality with this, fully supported. Um, so I'm just going to make calls in this case, we're going to assume. I'm not actually going to make a number here because it does take a little bit. And then what do I want to do? Send and receive SMS. Uh, maybe I don't want any of that. Maybe I want to send SMS. Well, next week, we're going to talk about SMS and email. But for now, I'm just going to select uh, send and receive SMS. So the next thing you're going to do is because I selected toll free, which again is about $2 a month, um, you could pick from a prefix. I'll just pick one here and then search. And what it'll do is it'll kind of reserve the number it gives you for a short period of time. I think it's uh, 15 minutes or so. And then you can go ahead and buy that if you'd like, and then that's your number. Now, I already have a number. I don't need this one, but you would simply go to next summary, and then you would be in business here. And that's all you would do. So very, very easy to get a phone number set up. And then once you have that phone number, we can actually use it in our code along with that connection string. So let me show you how we can actually implement something just like this. Now, this was custom UI. Obviously, it's not super fancy. I put a little dialer. Um, but the actual calling part that we're going to do right now, let me show you the code for that. All right. So jumping on in, the first thing we need to look at is remember that connection string I showed you? Well, we need a way to get to that. Now, in this case, I'm loading it from an environment variable. Uh, if you're using like Key Vault, you could certainly do that as well. Um, I'm kind of keeping it simple. We're just going to load it from an environment variable that's exposed to this API. Now, you'll notice up top here a couple packages. 
Azure communication identity. Uh, and then here's one for email and SMS. We'll look at that next week, actually. But for ours, we just need the identity. And so you'll notice that I have this create ACS token API. And this is just a standard RESTful type of API that can be called. And all it's going to do is return a user ID and a token. Now, we need that in order for ACS to be able to make the phone call in this case, and you'd use it for other things like audio video calling and others. So what I'm going to do is take this communication identity, I'm going to feed it that connection string I just showed you in the portal, and keep in mind, this is all on the server side though, and then we're going to use that to create the user, and then once we have that, we're going to also create a voice over IP, that's the VOIP, uh, voice over IP token, that could then be used so that we can make this call from the client side. All right, so now we're gonna send that data back and that's the API, that's it. It's a really, really simple API. Of course, this doesn't make the phone call, it's just gonna give us the user ID and the token so that we can make the phone call. All right, so that's kind of the first part of this is, you know, how do you expose the uh, connection string in this case without actually the client side uh, say it's React or Angular or something like that, knowing about that connection string. And that's what we're gonna do here. Now, to make the phone call, so if I go back here, how you know how are we actually, once I hit call and then I hit the call button, and even the, uh, the hang up, once you started this switches to hang up, how is that actually working? Well, if we go back, it's actually really simple. In fact, I'm gonna argue this is one of the more simple things you can do with it. Now, the first thing is, this is a tutorial. So I have a bunch of flags because you can go through the AI part of the tutorial and then stop. You could jump right to the ACS part, the communication part and stop, or you could go to the organizational data part and just do that. So I have to have some feature flags just to see what's available. Um, what I'm doing is saying, hey, do we have ACS available here? If we do, this is a build time thing, by the way, then we're gonna call that service and get that ACS token. And then we're gonna use that in this process of creating what's called a call client. Now, if I scroll back up, notice call client is part of Azure communication calling. So there's two main packages I'm using here. I have that communication calling, and then I also have the communication common. And keep in mind, while I'm doing TypeScript here, or you could use JavaScript, uh, there's many other language options as well. So even if you had like a desktop app, built in .NET and C Sharp or something. You could also do this. It's not limited to just JavaScript in this case. So if we come on down here, let's go back and right there, you'll notice that I create this call client, all right? And then I need that user token. I also need the credential. So what we do is say, okay, let's make a call client and let's create something called a call agent. Now you're gonna see in a moment, the call agent is actually what's gonna be used to uh, make that call and then hang up with that call. So the last part I wanna show you is right here. Now I hard coded my phone number. Normally it's gonna get it from what's ever on that grid, the data grid that I showed you earlier, like the customer number or the company number, something like that. In my case, customer phone number, that's my personal number. Um, I joked last week, I gave a talk on this in front of about a thousand people. And I, I called my wife though live and we had a conversation actually during the demo. And I accidentally moused over and showed the number. She was not real happy. Luckily, uh, it was edited out of the video. So, <laughs> but uh, that, let, let that be a lesson to you folks. Don't do that with your wife's number. Not a good, not a good look. Uh, but anyway, this call agent that you see right here, I'm gonna be, you see how careful I am to go around this now. Um, we're gonna just hit start call, that's it. And then it's gonna take, what is the phone number we wanna call? You'll notice though, we can pass an array. So you can do multi type calls. And then what is the alternate caller ID? Well, the from number, that's my 833 or whatever your, your toll free number you set up or local number. That's what that number is. All right, so super simple. You need, you know, who you're going to call, not Ghostbusters, but um, you're going to, you know, and then who, who's making the call. All right, and then I'm just doing some basic logging. Uh, you will get a call ID for that session. 
And then I'm going to mark that, yes, I'm in call. That's going to switch it to hang up. Now, to end the call, all we do is go back and say, hang up. And then for everyone, true. Or you can hang up on certain people if you had multiple in a call. And that's it. Like, it's literally, I don't know what, 10 lines of code total here to make the call. So to wrap up, you set up the ACS resource, get a toll-free number, write a little bit of code to get the token, and then use this type of code to actually make the call. And that's how you could add that type of functionality into your app. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Vesa and uh, we'll hit the next cool demo. So thanks for listening, folks. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.